Hello, everyone. Welcome to my webinar on how to model gas accumulators and AFD impulse. My name is Devin Rohrbaugh, and I am an engineering software developer at Applied Flow Technology. I helped improve the gas accumulator for AFD impulse 9, and I am excited to show you how to take advantage of the improved tool. The gas accumulator properties window has been significantly improved for AFT Impulse 9. We will discuss each feature of the new properties window so that you can best take advantage of these improvements. And then we'll talk a little bit on modeling a finite closed tank. And the assumptions are new gas accumulator tool uh, mix. <laughs> Let's start by talking about the minimum inputs you need to model a gas accumulator in AFD Impulse 9. So there are three required inputs. That's the junction elevation, the initial gas volume, and the polytropic constant and transient. Junction elevation is the elevation at the pipeline the gas accumulator is attached to, which you can see down here with this dimension line. The initial gas volume is the volume of the gas in the bladder during the steady state. The minimum input for that is a known volume for steady state entered directly. The polytropic constant and transient is the polytropic coefficient used in the transient gas expansion and contraction calculations. And we'll talk about that more a little later. So the properties window is made to be simple. And as you need more complexity, you can expand fields and find the inputs you need to enter. You'll see that more later. One new feature of the gas accumulator is the ability to track the change in liquid height in the gas accumulator during a transient. In order to do that, you need to specify this tank geometry inputs. With this tank geometry, uh, liquid height will be calculated and tracked. And the hydrostatic pressure between the tank bottom and the liquid surface will then be accounted for, since we know that liquid height. The tank type dropdown specifies tank orientation. You can see that drop down here. You can specify a vertical tank, a horizontal tank, or in that dropdown, you can specify other geometry, which allows you to model more complex geometries using a liquid height versus liquid volume grid. The cap type dropdown provides six typical cap or head options. That's this dropdown here with the example of ASME. 80 over 6, flanged and dished. Below that, you can see the volume, length, and diameter fields. They allow you to enter two out of three of the fields, and then we will calculate the third field for you. So if you want us to calculate volume, you would select the volume radio button, enter your height and diameter, and for that given cap type, we will give you the volume that your gas accumulator tank will be. I mentioned initial gas volume earlier as one of the required inputs. A known initial gas volume can be entered directly, but what do we do if we don't know the initial gas volume at steady state? Well, we can, we can click this calculate from pre-charge conditions radio button instead, and these options will drop down. From that, we have two options. We can assume isothermal, or we can do a non-isothermal calculation to get the, the uh, initial gas volume at that steady state. So, we have precharge gas pressure, precharge gas volume, and precharge gas temperature to enter as input. You have to enter all three if you're doing the non-isothermal option. 
which only assumes ideal gas and does this equation down here of P times V over T equals constant. If you don't know the precharge temperature, you can assume isothermal to get an estimate and just use the pressure of the gas at precharge and the volume of the gas at precharge. If you do not know precharge conditions, but you know a reference condition of pressure, volume, or pressure, volume, and temperature, you can enter that here as well. Lastly, we have this liquid temperature rain, or field. That field is just for non-isothermal, and that allows you to either specify a liquid temperature at the steady state, or let impulse calculate that temperature at that steady state for you, which would just be the uh, temperature that's entered in the system properties or fluid properties window. For initial gas pressure, you can see this frame here. The default is to calculate it from steady state. It's the initial gas pressure the gas accumulator sees at steady state. How this is calculated is the gas accumulator is originally treated as a branch during steady state and the pressure at the pipeline is then calculated in steady state and then taking into account the hydrostatic pressure the gas pressure at the bladder is figured out. The known option instead allows you to constrain the pressure at the gas accumulator in the steady state. So this treats the gas accumulator like a tank junction where you assign the pressure at that point in your piping system, and this will cause a flow imbalance where the inlet flow to the gas accumulator can be different from the outlet flow and allow you to model right at the start of, trans of a transient the draining or filling of a gas accumulator. The polytropic constant and transient input is the N value and the polytropic process equation, which you can see here. The polytropic constant should be between one and the isentropic expansion coefficient, where one represents a change that is isothermal and the isentropic expansion coefficient represents a perfectly reversible expansion. In reality, this polytropic constant changes with time throughout the transient. However, it's important to note that we assume in AFD impulse 9 that the polytropic constant does not change over time. <clears throat> Two other parameters that affect the transient expansion and contraction are the maximum and minimum gas volume fields seen here. These limit the volume the gas can expand or contract to. If a max gas volume is not specified, but you specify the tank geometry, then the tank volume will act as the mass or max gas volume. So any passive restriction at the inlet of the gas accumulator tank can be modeled as a flow restrictor. The flow restrictor is assumed to be an orifice with a CD and area value. However, you can model a strainer, valve, or any other form of restriction by using an equivalent CD and area value. The most efficient way to get that CD and area input from a supplied K factor, CV, or KV is to make a simple fathom model with a valve using a K-factor CV or KV, shown here. Then an output control 
add the equivalent orifice area parameter to the valve summary output seen here. Once you get that value from Fathom, you can then go back to the gas accumulator properties window and use it as the flow restrictor or the restrictor flow area, this value, and use 0 0.6 for the CD for CD inflow and CD outflow. By default, the connector pipe going from the pipeline to the gas accumulator tank is assumed to be small enough that it's frictional and hydrostatic effects are negligible. So we assume the full short connector pipe is negligible. However, if that's not the case, you can model these effects with the short connector pipe option. If the connector pipe's frictional effects need to be considered, you can enter the short connector pipe's Darcy friction factor over here, internal diameter, and pipe length to account for those frictional effects. If the connecting pipe is sufficiently tall, you can account for that as well with the elevation change field down here with its separate checkbox. If the connector pipe is not vertical and has a slope or angle to it, the pipe length and the elevation change fields can be set to different values to represent a connector pipe slope. Another benefit of the gas accumulator is that you can use it to model finite closed tanks. <clears throat> To model a closed tank, you must set the initial gas pressure to known, as seen here, and then enter a pressure that represents the, the liquid surface pressure due to the compressed air at the top of the finite closed tank. Then specify the tank geometry so, the li so that the liquid height can be accounted for. Using the gas accumulator as a closed tank assumes two things. It assumes the pipes are connected to the bottom of the tank at a single point, which you can kind of see in this image. And that if the tank empties, the air will not leave the tank through the pipes and go into the rest of your system. The gas accumulator can represent a finite closed tank with either one or two pipes. If one pipe is used, the user will get this pop-up caution message shown on the right just letting you know that you are modeling a finite tank that is likely draining or filling up. The last thing I want to discuss are the assumptions a gas, gas accumulator feature makes so that you can best um, model your gas accumulator and understand what's going on. The first assumption is that the interface between the liquid and the gas is perfectly flat, kind of like this image. This should have negligible effects on flow and pressure results. However, it can have significant effects on the raft liquid height results. Secondly, the gas does not mix with the liquid, so we are assuming that the transient is fast enough that there's no gas um, mixing in with the water and going down into your piping system. We assume that the gas stays separate from the liquid at all times. Third, the gas pressure equals the liquid surface pressure. This assumption means that the stiffness of the diaphragm or whatever is separating the liquid and the gas is negligible in our calculations. So the force balance at that diaphragm or bladder will be the force due to the pressure of the gas minus the force due to the pressure of the liquid surface equals zero. Fourth, the gas is an ideal gas. The ideal gas law used in steady state to calculate the initial gas volume 
is one assumption. And the compressibility factor is not accounted for in the transient calculations. Lastly, as mentioned before, the polytropic constant does not change during the transient. The polytropic constant in a real system, however, changes depending on the rate of expansion or contraction at any uh, step of time in a transient. The polytropic constant will approach one for isothermal or very fast rates of expansion or contraction, and will approach the isentropic expansion coefficient for a very slow reversible like rates of expansion and contraction. So it's up to the user to figure out a good polytropic constant for them, understanding that this constant will be used throughout their transient simulation. And that's it. Thank you for taking the time to listen to my webinar. I hope it has helped you to have an improved understanding of the gas accumulator junction and be able to use its new tools to their full potential. If you have any questions, concerns, or thoughts, please feel free to email us at support at AFT.com or call us at 719-686-1000.